Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320. And it's Monday and it's time for a new project. And the project is behind me. It's an Ikea bar cart. And I want to really redo it and make it so cool that anyone's going to want it in their living room or their great room or wherever they have their parties and their cocktails. Bill is going to, my husband, have to help me with this one a little bit because I'm not a carpenter and he is my consultant so I'm going to be consulting him quite a bit on this one. I'm going to have to make a trip to the hardware store because I need inspiration. I really want to transform this into to something that's going to be really hip. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment and press that red button. You can follow me on Instagram and you can find me on Etsy where I am selling some of my past projects that I've done right here on my channel. You can find all of those links in the description box below along with all of the materials I used this week. <laughs> Stick around. I used simple green to clean off the piece. There was a lot of gross stuff on there. Had to use a putty knife. I don't know what it was and I don't wanna know. <laughs> well, this just happened. I was trying, look at, there's a peg under there. I was trying to loosen this Big, big mistake on my part. At least I know now there's a peg there. I'm sanding off the top with a 60 grit, then going to 120, then 220. I sanded and sanded <laughs> and sanded some more. This took a long time. I'm using my oscillating tool with its teeny tiny little saw to saw through these wooden wheels. And I'm taking them off. There's a little peg in the middle, but it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna be cutting most of this off anyway. But the wheels were in the way. I had to do that first. As usual, the second one was not as easy to get off. I had to steady the dang thing with my foot, but I got it off, no problem. Now I had to get this back where the peg was. There was a little place where it was cut out for the peg. So once I did that, then I could concentrate on gluing this piece back together. It was all there. There wasn't anything missing. So it was actually much easier than I thought it was going to be. That was a nice surprise. I put a couple of clamps on there just until the glue dried. You always want to do that just to make sure it doesn't move. Now I am measuring for my two pieces that are going to go underneath in order to hold the wine glass rack that I purchased. I measured it, got them all ready, used the miter box, and now I am measuring between the slats where the wine bottles are gonna go. And now I am marking them a little bit better so that when I use the drill press, there are, that's the blade, that goes on the drill press. And you'll see in a minute why I'm not using the drill press. <laughs> but this worked very well. This was perfect. It was very quick. This piece that Bill is cutting is for the bottom where I'm going to add um, the wheels. Now, speaking of the wheels, I need to use the jigsaw to cut off that little part where the wheel went. You may have noticed that I started the jigsaw before I hit the wood. You always want to do that. You don't want to start the jigsaw when you're butted up against the wood. 
because it could kick back. It's Wednesday and I feel a little behind. I'm not worried. I had a lot of extra stuff that I did yesterday. I learned how to use a drill press that didn't go as planned. It hasn't been used for a while. The chuck fell off while I was using it. That was a little scary, but nothing bad happened. I went to the drill with the same attachment. And so it's got a tiny little saw around the drill and it creates a circle. And then Phil was good enough to rip this for me because I am terrified of the table saw. <laughs> this is the result. And this is going to go here. Look how nicely that fits. And I'm gonna glue it in. And then I'm gonna be putting a piece that I cut on the miter box. So I used the miter box yesterday, which I've used before. I love the miter box. Uh, and I'm gonna put it here. So I will be painting and staining and I am also going to be using pieces like this on the drawers that go here. That will give it some texture. I, I think I've decided on a dark stain. I'm I was using an oscillating tool, this little monster. It's actually a very good tool. I use it when it has a saw on it. This is a little 80 grit sandpaper. The reason I'm going to so much trouble is because I want to stain these rungs. It just takes time. In the mail today, I'm gonna to get a little rack so you can put glasses in here. I'm very excited about this. I'm going to be cutting these down. I'm gonna be adding this to here. I cut these down yesterday. And then I'm going to be cutting these to match the other ones. It seems to be the best way to do this. We need this to be stable. And then I'm going to be putting wheels on all of the legs. All right, so now I've told you everything I'm going to do. Let's actually do it, shall we? Good morning, it's Thursday. I'm a little behind. I had to put stripper on my piece last night because my oscillating tool that I was using to sand between the slats of the bar cart, it died. I tried to just sand it off with my sanding sponges, but it won't work. I bought a new stripper and it's supposed to be more environmentally friendly, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't do me any good. What makes it more environmentally friendly is the materials that they use to make it, but also I don't need to use saran wrap with this. When you put stripper on, you usually put saran wrap over the top. You don't have to, but you want to keep it wet. And so if you're going to put it on there for quite a while, I always put saran wrap and it has worked very well, except it creates creates a lot of waste. We will see. I woke up this morning, the stripper looked like it wasn't working. It creates like a little hard shell over the stripper and underneath it's supposed to stay wet. I thought I had put it on there thick enough, but there were spots where it didn't look like it was thick enough. So I went around and just really globbed it on there like thick frosting, like thick frosting. You have to leave it on there at least four hours. I'm hoping that it works. I feel a little defeated. It feels like it's not going to work. I didn't think that it would take much for this paint to come off because it's chalk paint. It's very powdery. I may have to change my plan. We'll see how it goes. It'll be fine. Stick around. I guess it worked. It was very hard to get off completely. I worked at it for quite a while with many different tools, warm water with soap, scrubby pads, <laughs> brushes, very frustrating. Good morning, it's Friday. Here's where I'm at. It has been a weird, weird week. I usually like the challenge. This week it has proved to be a bigger challenge than I 
had anticipated. I knew it was gonna be tough because you have these slats. This is where the wheels were. There were only wheels on the back. I am going to add wheels to all four. This is going to hang underneath the top and you're gonna be able to put wine glasses there. You know what, I'm gonna show you one of my glasses. I make these with clay. Anyway, <laughs> and I sell them. Okay, so, oops, goes this way. And you slide it like that. Cool, right? This was only $12.99. It's solid metal, it's very nicely painted, matte black, it looks great. I'm gonna put these two boards up underneath on this piece like this, and then I will be able to mount this. I spent the whole day yesterday trying to get off that stripper and I'm still getting it off. You can't leave any of that residue behind. You have to get it off. It doesn't come off easily. I'm using a brush and it was the same thing all day yesterday. It's overwhelming. I just had to walk away last night. I need to see progress of some kind and it just felt like there was none. I used this last week. It's a gorgeous color. It's apothecary gray. It goes on really nicely. It's a uh, melange one. It's an all-in-one, which means it has primer and it has top coat, which is just a lovely, lovely thing. <laughs> It means it's just one stop. I'm a little out of sorts today. It was nice chatting with you. I feel a little bit better. I'm gonna get to work because I have a hmm load <laughs> to do. Stick around. Now that the stripper is finally off, I can sand everything down with a 120 and a 220 grit sandpaper. So all surfaces will be nice and smooth and ready for paint and stain. Now the other thing I need to do is tape. I started to paint and then realized, whoops, I, I need to tape off some areas because some areas I'm going to stain and some areas I'm going to paint. Remember, it's much easier to get stain off a of paint than it is to get paint off a of stain. I just marked the back legs. I'm going to be cutting those there with the jigsaw and then I'm sanding it down with my orbital sander. Now here, I am going to pre-drill. Now check it out. Oh, good Lord. I hate seeing this. This is painful. Look at how I'm holding that drill. Stop everything. <laughs> you need to hold that drill straight up and down so that bit isn't crooked. I got lucky here. I pre-drilled these and it worked okay. Because when you pre-drill, then you can get the screw in there much easier but you need to look at your drill bit from the side because it's very hard to see which way your drill bit is going. If you're looking above, it looks maybe like it's straight up and down, but it's not necessarily. Okay, I just sanded the top with the 120, 220, and now I'm going to stain with Verithane. The color is Kona. This is a fast drying stain. It's still an oil base, but it's fast drying. And I really liked this color. It's a nice deep dark color, which is exactly what I wanted. Finally getting to add the texture to the drawers. This is some trim that I bought at Menards. It comes in a nice long strip. It's got two sides and I was trying to decide whether I wanted to do like uh, every other with each of the textures, the different kinds of lines, but I decided to go with all one kind of uh, design and I glued them down with my Elmer's wood glue and now I'm painting them. And now they look like they're part of the drawer. Okay, I don't know what happened to my footage, but I, <laughs> I did glue my little wine bottle holder. There is that bit I was talking about before. It is actually a tapered bit. 
and it's good for pre-drilling. Um, my husband calls it a pointy bit, <laughs> but its technical name is a tapered bit. It's nice for pre-drilling. I used a nice big fat bit here because I was putting in these metal pieces for my wheels. Now you noticed I had a little piece of tape. That's so I didn't go too far down into the wood. It's just a good reminder. Makes it a no-brainer. Quick footage of me staining the underside of the top. And this is a safety tip. Oily rags in a bucket of water with some generic Dawn dish soap. These are the boards that I cut earlier with the miter saw. And I'm pre-drilling them before I'm installing them. And unfortunately, even though I pre-drilled it, I split the board. Well, good Saturday morning to you. I'm almost done. I've gotten used to a certain rhythm. This piece has given me a run for my money. There are so many little crevices to this thing. Ugh. I was anxious to get this done. This was the final straw. This is what sent me up to the showers. <laughs> It shouldn't have split. I pre-drilled it. I don't know. I, I can't even explain it. I can always go back and cut a new piece, but for the sake of getting this piece finished, you know, I don't think I need four screws in here. I think I will screw in here in the center and that should be plenty. It's not like there's going to be a lot of heavy stuff going on there. This is very light you know glasses aren't that heavy a little note about the hardware i got this hardware it wasn't this color it was like a, a brushed nickel i have these and then i have the the drawer pulls these are for the ends to hang towels on and to push the cart around this one looks great i'm using a satin nickel and a champagne mist which is one of my faves and it gives it this real nice color when i was spraying the satin nickel the the silver color was spitting it was at the end of the can and it was spitting out blobs yeah so i had to wipe it off and do it again and then it did it again <laughs> bought another can and now I'm going to take off the paint that I spray painted. And this is the good news. You can use mineral spirits and this works just fine. This is the same company that made that stripper that I had so much trouble with. Mm. Enough chatting. Let's finish this. Okay, so I'm not using a drill bit to pre-drill. I'm using a screw because my husband took his drill bits to work. Imagine that a carpenter taking his drill bits to work. <laughs> Downside of sharing with your carpenter husband. All right, it worked just fine. Everything's installed. Now I'm using some mineral spirits to clean off the stain from the paint. Well, friends, that is not all I have for you today because sometimes, no matter how much you plan, something still just doesn't work so check it out and keep in mind I don't know what to do yet all right there's just a pretend bottle well it's an empty bottle and it's resting nicely and here's my wine glass not only is it too long but turns out it hits the wine bottle when I was putting this on, I went back and forth. Do I put it down here, put it down here? And I thought, well, it's easier to grab a bottle from the top. And I'm thinking, well, it's easier to grab the wine glass from the top. I could knock this out. Now it's glued in there, pretty good. I could see if this, if I can put it over here without those boards across that gave me so much trouble yesterday. That will be the the simplest fix, if it works. Projects do this. Don't get discouraged. I'm telling myself that it's all good. I'm gonna take this off and try and put it over here and see what happens. There isn't a whole lot of extra. It, it might be enough. It might be enough. I'm gonna try that now.
spoiler alert, it, it doesn't work. I had to take the boards off anyway because the rack wouldn't fit. And it wouldn't fit because of where the screws go. So I put the rack on the bottom shelf. It'll be fine. Well, I think there's a little black cloud over me. <laughs> you know, about a hundred times last night, I thought I should put the drawers in and see what they look like. The cart was upside down. The little trim that I put on there came up just a fraction above the drawer. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Look at it barely comes above just a little just a little and it's flush on the bottom. Why I didn't do it flush on the top, let it hang down on the bottom, I didn't really think about it. I think I can probably sand it. That's what I'm gonna do. Got the wine rack to work. <laughs> I really like this cart too. I'm, I have just a couple more things to do and I'm afraid to do them. All I have to do is put the hardware on. I am gonna sand them down and see what happens. Another spoiler alert, it worked. It was easy, actually. <laughs> okay, on to the hardware. Ugh. I, I like this card. I don't know why it doesn't like me. All right, I needed Phil's help on this one. It was just a millimeter off, and we couldn't fix it, not even with the drill. So we made the hole bigger and used a washer to cover up the hole. All right, I drilled a hole for the drawers. The first drawer went fine. And then the second drawer, I drilled too low. Here's the trim with the dripping glue. <laughs> it's late, guys. It was fine. And here I am with the second drawer. Bad things happen when you work 15 hours straight. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> I drilled the holes in the wrong place. Simple as that. So I filled the holes with plastic wood X. Okay, I decided to put pulls on the top to make a little barrier for the bottles. It was actually Phil's idea. I thought it was a great idea. I bought two, three sizes, and I like the shorter ones on the side. Now I'm just measuring, calculating, and really you could do it any way you wanted as long as they were even on all sides. This is a case where I had to measure. I could not eyeball. These poles were not forgiving. You had to know exactly where those holes had to be drilled. Okay, I'm sanding. Now I'm gonna drill. First one goes great. Measure twice. Now the second one, I it went automatically to where it had drilled before. I was dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it did it. So now I'm putting quick wood in there, thinking, oh, that'll work. It'll be good. It'll dry fast. That wouldn't dry. I had to scrape it out of there and do it again. These washers looked really nice. That Because of that big hole we drilled, we put washers in there. That Phil, he knows his stuff. Third time's a charm. It was a little bit off, but I was able to tweak it so that it looked even. Well, friends, it is 1.38 a.m. I am finished. I have very few words. <laughs> um, I am relieved. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I had so many things that went wrong, choices I made that turned into ridiculously long labored work. I am hoping that you learned from everything that went wrong. So maybe it's a good thing. Now that I know the pitfalls what to look for, uh, what not to do, um, some products that I may not use again. We'll have to wait on that one. I don't like to say never. And don't forget, wait for those after pictures. Thanks for being here. See you next time. You can do it. <laughs>